Hi there, pet owners. I'm Dr. Bo Zelka. I'm an emergency and critical care veterinarian, and here's an updated video on the H5N1 bird flu in our pets. Now, keep in mind this video is not intended to be fear-mongering by any means. This video is just intended to provide information on a topic that a lot of people have a lot of questions for me about. So to kick off this video, here's an updated map of case outbreaks in wild birds across different counties in the United States. Now keep in mind, even though this map is just about wild birds and not our pets or other animals, it's still important to understand and know this map because if you live in one of these counties where we're seeing a lot of cases come up, it might be more important for you to take some of the safety precautions that I've discussed in other videos and that I'll also discuss about here briefly if you wish to do so to keep your pets safe. A lot of people want to know if dogs can get this virus, and yes, absolutely dogs can get this virus, and even though they're not nearly as affected by this virus when compared to cats and ferrets, in rare cases, the bird flu can potentially be fatal to dogs, so especially if you live in one of those counties we discussed before, it might be important to take safety precautions for your dogs as well. When it comes to feeding your pets, I still don't recommend feeding them raw products because again, we have linked cats getting this virus and passing away from it to specific commercially available raw products. Now, when it comes to raw products, the high pressure pasteurization process in theory is enough to kill this virus, but it depends on the specific protocol that the individual company uses, and I can't answer that for you. So if you have any questions on HPP products, you can contact the company directly. And no, the freeze drying process does not kill this virus. A lot of people also had questions in terms of what commercially available products are actually cooked thoroughly enough and which ones are not. Speaking generally, as long as the product you're looking at, either the can or the bag, does not say raw, it means it has been cooked. And again, speaking generally, when it comes to commercially available pet foods, the procedure to process those commercially available pet foods typically cooks the food at high enough temperatures to eliminate the virus. So if you're looking at a bag or a can that doesn't say raw, chances are it's been cooked thoroughly enough. But if you have any questions, again, you can always contact the manufacturer. For those of you that have been asking me how to protect your backyard chicken coops, there's plenty of online government resources in terms of how to practice appropriate biosecurity to keep your chickens safe. Some of those websites include the CDC, APHIS, and then a lot of universities like Michigan State University have resources as well in terms of procedures you can follow to keep your chickens safe. If you are taking care of a feral cat population, again, there's not much you can do in order to protect them other than not feed them raw products and to keep them as full as possible to prevent them from hunting. But if you are taking care of them and you have pets at home, one of the best things you can do is to make sure you wear different clothes when you handle the feral cats versus when you come home. For those of you that are really concerned about you personally bringing this virus into your home after being out and about in the world, one of the best things you can do if you wish to do this is to change your clothes right when you get home before you ever interact with your pets and not let your pets snip the clothes or shoes you wore on the outside. What you do is you take all your old clothes and either put them straight into the washing machine or put them into a garbage bag until you do your laundry. Now, for those of you that live in confined spaces like trailers that discuss that you were really concerned that there's not enough space, what you could potentially do are get baby gates and gate off a very small section right in front of the door and make that your changing station before you ever interact with your pets and not let your pets into that area. When it comes to cleaning to eliminate this virus for hard surfaces, there are commercially available wipes like Lysol and Chlorox wipes that are labeled to be effective against this virus. For fabric surfaces, what I would tell you to do is look for a spray cleaning solution that has hypochlorous acid as the active ingredient. The other thing you could do would be to make a homemade diluted bleach solution and use that. And the Clorox website has a very great chart that shows you how to make specific bleach dilutions and what the contact time needs to be to eliminate this virus. Now keep in mind, if you live in a confined space, diluted bleach is not a good idea because the fumes are very damaging to our pet sensitive noses and they can't be around when you either make this solution up or use it. For basic safety precautions, keep your cats indoors, don't feed raw products to cats or dogs, and when you are walking your dogs, make sure you avoid contact with wildlife, dead carcasses, and avoid walking in areas where there's a heavy wildlife population. There was also briefly information on the CDC's website about the potential of this virus being able to be spread from cats to people, but unfortunately, since the new administration has taken over, that information has since been taken down, so unfortunately, that's all I can tell you about it because that's that's all I know at this point. And to finish this video off, here are the signs of H5N1 bird flu in our pets. And if you see these signs, please contact your veterinarian for them to give you guidance on what to do next. 